أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كونوا قوامين لله شهداء بالكست ولا يجرمنكم شنان قوم على لا تعذلوا اعذلوا هو اقرب للتقوى ان واتقوا الله ان الله خبير بما تعملون يا حسرة على العباد ما ياتيهم من رسول الا قانوا به يستحذرون Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, I deem it an honor to be addressing the Jalsa Salana on a subject that will give a glimpse into the pure character of the life of the Imam of the age, a life that was modeled on that of his master, the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The translation of the ninth verse of Surah al maida that I recited is, O ye who believe, be steadfast in the cause of Allah, bearing witness in equity, and let not a people's enmity to incite you to act otherwise than with justice. Be always just that is nearer to righteousness, and fear Allah. Surely Allah is well aware of what you do. The other was from Surah Yasin, verse 31, Alas for my servants, there comes not a messenger, but they mock at him. And history bears witness that this has been and indeed forms part of the life of every messenger of God that has come to this earth. The Holy Prophet وسلم, was known as Al Amin by the Meccans, but as soon as he made his claim, he was persecuted and ridiculed by those same very people. The promised Messiah salam, prior to his claim was championed as the savior of Islam. But as soon as under divine command had he made his claim that he too faced the most bitter opposition. He always displayed patience, sympathy and kindness to those people who opposed him. This is the subject I must speak on today. Today we feel in a world that is filled with hate, violence and rancor and the incidence of the kindness of the Promised Messiah even to his opponents is a lesson for all of humanity. Whenever the world has stood in need of guidance, Allah the Almighty has sent his messenger to the world. Allah reminds us in the Holy Quran, وَلَقَدْ بَأَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ عُمَّةِ الرَّسُولِ And we did raise among every people a messenger. The verse continues preaching, Worship, preaching worship Allah and shun the evil one then among them are some who are rightly guided and among them are some who become deserving of ruin two groups emerge one those lives undergo a pure transformation and the other who spend all their energies in the rejection of the prophet tooth and oppose him tooth and nail at the head of the 14th century in fulfillment of prophecies, the promised Messiah and Mahdi alayhi salam was raised for the renaissance of Islam. In 1889, he laid down the conditions that one must fulfill and took the oath of allegiance. Kindness and sympathy to others was considered so important that even two of these ten conditions emphasized this subject. The fourth condition I lay before you, that under the impulse of any passions, he shall cause no harm whatsoever to the creatures of God in general and Muslims in particular, 
neither by his tongue, hand, or by any other means. So one has to agree, one has to concede that with conditions, basic conditions such as these, the emphasis is on the kind treatment to the whole of mankind. Hazur salam himself stated, I am Muslims and Hindus and Aryans on this point that there is no enemy in the world. I am from the earth and I love the human beings that I love the human beings as I love the children of my children but I love the human beings as I love the human beings. I proclaim to all Muslims, Christians, Hindus and Aryans that I have no enemy in the world I love mankind with the love that a compassionate mother has for her children, even more so than that. Ladies and gentlemen, these were not mere words, but time and time again we find incidents in his life which prove this beyond a shadow of any doubt. It truly was love for all, hatred for none. Onlookers are left dumbfounded that his heart melts for the sympathy of mankind while having no concern for his own self. We know that Allah the Almighty showed many signs in support, many grand signs in support of the truth of the promised Messiah. The eclipses are one and the plague is another. He repeatedly made announcements warning people of the impending calamity of the plague and urging them to turn to God. He feared that they would suffer, did they not? Hazrat Maulwi Abdul Karim Sahib anhu, relates that for a time in Qadian, he stayed in Qadian, and for a time his retreat was a room above the Baitul Dua and was a witness at first hand of the supplications of the promised Messiah in the darkness and the stillness of the night. While everyone else slept, he would hear the promised Messiah in deep, deep supplication. He says with so much pain, so much anguish, that it was as if there was a woman who was giving childbirth. When he listened intently, he was amazed that Hazur was beseeching pleading with his Lord, pleading that people be saved from the chastisement of the plague. This to me, ladies and gentlemen, is the epitome of the kindness of the promised Messiah towards those who rejected him. It was a matter between him and his creator. No one was there to witness these supplications. While knowing on the one hand that if a disbelieving people escaped the punishment of the plague, they would rejoice. Yet, he laments for their safety, and it is only by chance that a companion overhears these cries and reports that to us. The Promised Messiah was on the receiving end of wild verbal abuse, degrading attacks, edicts on his life, attempts to assassinate him. Articles in newspapers hurled abuse at him. The worst kind of letters, was abusive letters were sent to him. Even the postage was not paid. He would open them, he would have to read the vile abuse, and he would simply pray for these mischief mongers and place all those letters in a sack. Never a word of disgust Never a word of complaint, never any retaliation. All he would do in response was display patience and forbearance. Names such as Molvi Muhammad Hussain Batalvi, Saadullah Ludanwi and Jafar Zitli were just some who crossed all borders of decency. Muhammad Hussain Batalvi, a leader of the Ahli Hadith sect, who in 1893 hailed Hazur as the savior of Islam. However, when under divine command, the promised Messiah 
made his claim of being the awaited Messiah and Mahdi, this very same Malvi be became the most bitter opponent and for the rest of his life made it his goal to oppose him. He wrote slanderous articles. The language that he used is the worst kind that you can imagine. And much of that is too painful to even repeat. In his publication, he had a publication, Ishatu Sunnah, and he used words such as raving drunkard, intriguer, swindler, accursed, God forbid, Nauzubillah, and sorry I cannot repeat any more of what the Malbi wrote. He gathered edicts of kufr, of disbelief against the promised Messiah, even gave false evidence in a case with a view of humiliating and bringing about the ruin of Hazrat Masih It was in 1897, Dr. Henry Martin Clark, a Christian missionary, charged the promised Messiah with an attempt on his wife, on his life. Not only that, but he portrayed him as a mischief monger and a dangerous man. The same Malvi, Muhammad Sam, came forward as a prosecution witness to lend support to the concocted story. It was indeed, if you think about it, a serious, serious matter. In the event of a miscarriage of justice, this could have resulted in life imprisonment or even the death penalty for Hazur al-Islam. The promised Messiah's lawyer, Malvi Fazaldin, wanted to weaken the prosecution case by damaging the character of their witnesses. He therefore asked Hazur's permission to ask questions of Muhammad Hussain about his parentage. It is alleged that his mother had been a prostitute. Despite everything, the promised Messiah would not allow his counsel to ask any such questions and strongly forbade him not to say a single word that might, might cause embarrassment to Malvi Muhammad Hussain. Not only that, but to be sure, the promised Messiah stretched his hand towards the mouth of his attorney just in case he started this line of questioning and he said, I do not wish to put him to shame. This, ladies and gentlemen, was the extent of the kind treatment that the promised Messiah showed to this particular opponent at that time, who on his part, as I have said, left no stone unturned in causing every kind of pain to the promised Messiah. The lawyer, as I said, Malvi Fazal Deen Sahib, incidentally, who was uh, not in Ahmadi, often recalled this in latter years, and he would say, Mirza Sahib possesses extraordinary morals, that here is a person, he attacks not only his honor, but he attacks his life. And when in response some questions are framed to weaken his testimony, he states, I will not allow such questions to be asked of this witness. The charges, as you know, were all false. The promised Messiah was acquitted honorably, and he forgave all those who stood against him. The district magistrate, Colonel Douglas, even told the promised Messiah that he was at liberty to prosecute the witnesses if he so desired. But Hazur just replied that he did not wish for this, saying that his case was registered above. This case took place in 1897, and despite the promised Messiah magnanimous forgiveness to all of them, including Malvi Muhammad Hussain, that was not the end of the bitter opposition. And years later, many years later, Batalwi Sahib fell on hard times. His press shut down. His journal, Ishatu Sunnah, stopped being published. But he continued to write articles against Hazur Salam. But no one was prepared to publish them. When the Promised Messiah Salam came to know of this, he felt sorry for him. He had sympathy for him. 
and he felt pity for him. Scores of years of the most bitter opposition were once again overlooked. Not only that, but he sent him a message inviting him to come to Qadian, to stay there with them. Not only that, but also promised to print those articles of his in our journals. That sort of act of kindness is unheard of. But these are the qualities of the messengers of God, his chosen ones, and Hazrat Masih Ahmad Salam was certainly one of those. A man by the name of Nihal Singh, who in his youth had served in the army in India, he lived in Qadian, another extreme opponent of the Jamaat, and he would join with others and cause trouble for the Ahmadis, and to abuse them with foul language was just a matter of routine for this Nihal Singh. And on his allegation, a dangerous criminal case against the Promised Messiah and other Ahmadis was registered in the courts in Qadiyan. At the exact time of the court case, his nephew Santa Singh, his wife, fell ill and was in need of musk for her treatment. Musk was and still is a rare and very precious commodity. So what does he do in this situation? He goes to the door of the Promised Messiah asking for the musk. Remember, this is the time when he has this court case against the Promised Messiah in the court at that time. Many others would have told him to go away. However, the Promised Messiah wastes no time. He comes to the door himself, listens to what he has to say, and says to him, wait. I will fetch this for you. So the Promised Messiah goes inside, brings out five or, six tola, five or six grams of musk and hands it over to him. How brazen was Nihal Singh. He would not let up his opposition. He brought false criminal charges against the Promised Messiah. But when he needs this most precious commodity, he demands it from the Promised Messiah who on his part has not the slightest hesitation, but gives it to him free and without any questions asked. Hazur al-Islam had to endure opposition in many forms and obstacles were placed before him. I'll give you an example of one such obstacle. It was a wall, a physical barrier eight foot high, taller than me, much taller, erected by his two cousins Mirza Nizam Deen and Mirza Imam Deen. The wall created such a barrier that it was like being imprisoned, confined in a very tight space. For me, it was difficult to imagine as to what sort of trouble that this wall would create in the path of the Promised Messiah But I found a statement that Hazur gave to the court. Hazur said, the erection of this wall has caused me great trouble. A new well had to be constructed involving expense, and the, suf and the press suffered a great deal. Visitors and friends have experienced hardship. Some of them have been injured. The weak and infirm are unable to join with me in the Fajr and Isha prayers. Guests come here to learn religion, but when they are put to all this trouble on account of the wall, I am pained and I am shocked. I have no words to describe these troubles. These were the words of the Promised Messiah. Finally, on legal advice, the matter had to be taken to the courts for resolution. And these proceedings took a long time. They were very much protracted. Some 18 months later, a year and a half, the matter was finally decided. The judge ordered that the wall be uh, pulled down and awarded compensation to the Promised Messiah Subsequently, the compensation was not paid, and a bailiff arrived in Qadian to impound the goods of Mirza Nizam Deen. That night, he sent a message to Hazur asking for mercy. He had no money. He would have to sell his house. And he had the goal to ask, why were they being humiliated in this way? The Promised Messiah informed them 
that this decree had been obtained without his knowledge and without his permission and assured them that he would not be making any such claim. Hazrat Khalifa Tul Masih II relates that after Isha, Allah informed the Prophet through a revelation or a dream that this was a heavy burden as a result of which the opposing relatives were suffering. He remarked that the Hazur remarked, I will not be able to sleep, so someone should be sent immediately to inform them that we have forgiven these costs. That was the nature of the promised Messiah, that despite months, months of facing difficulties from the actions of these people, when he comes to know of their plight, he is not even prepared to wait a single day and he wishes to remove their concerns immediately, so he sends someone and tells them that their troubles are indeed over. The way, very same Mirza Nizam Deen mentioned above, he would appoint a brash person to stand outside the house of Huzur al-Islam to shout abuse at him. Rasul Bibi Sahiba, the wife of Hamid Ali Sahib, relates that it happened a few times that this abuse continued not only throughout the whole day, but continued throughout the whole night. You should ask, you should ask yourself, what would your reaction be to a disturbance like this? But let me tell you, what was the reaction of the promised Messiah She relates that at dawn, in the morning, after a whole night of hearing this abuse, Hazur al-Islam suggested that something should be sent to him to eat as he must be tired having shouted throughout the night and his throat must be dry also. Hazrat Sheikh Yaqub Ali Sahib Irfani relates that it is not a secret that Mirza Imam Din Sahib was a zealous opponent of the Jamaat and was against the family of the Promised Messiah However, Hazur al-Islam on his part in worldly matters always overlooked this opposition and would treat them with kindness and often extended financial assistance to them even while he continued with this opposition and enmity. On one occasion, an incident, Mirza Imam Deen required a horse. He wanted to sell it and thought that the horse would achieve a much better price if it was sent to Jammu and to be sold there thinking that Punjabis perhaps don't know much about horses. So he, he came up with a ploy that if the horse could be sent to Jammu, and of course, Malvi Nuruddin Sahib was there, he thought this would be the way to sell that horse in Jammu. But how to get Malvi Sahib on board? So he approached Hazur al-Islam and asked him to write to Malvi Sahib and to make a favor to sell this horse in Jammu. The promised Messiah had no hesitation. He put pen to paper, wrote to Mulvi Sahib with a request to help him finding a buyer for this opponent of his. Hazur al faced not only verbal opposition, but also was subjected to physical attacks. On one occasion in 1892, after his claim, Hazur went to Lahore. He used to offer prayers in a mosque near to the house of Mia Chirag Din Sahib. He was returning from the mosque accompanied by some attendants when the brother of Peghambar Singh who had claimed to be a Mahdi approached Hazur from behind and attacked him. He tried to wrestle Hazur to the ground but he did not succeed and the attendants restrained him. But he kept on verbally abusing Hazur which enraged his companions. The promised Messiah took no notice of the attacks but feared the retaliation and strictly told them leave him do not take any action, he is deranged. Hazur continued on his way home, but he kept glancing back to make sure that no harm came to this attacker and kept instructing, see no harm comes to him. Hazur al arrived back home. The man was released, who then stood outside the residence and continued with his shouting. Even then, Hazur repeatedly said, nothing should be sent to him nothing should be said to him, you must display patience and forbearance. Those accompanying Hazur were enraged with the attacker 
wanted to exact retribution, but Huzura Islam's nature was always to be kind and compassionate even to those people who attacked you. Many a time, he had to endure prolonged incidents of abuse being shouted at him. And Hazrat Maulvi Abdul Karim Sahib Raziyallahu said that the Promise of Islam one day said that I have so much control and God has granted so much obedience to my soul that even if someone was to sit before me and shout wild abuse at me for a whole year, finally it would be he who would have to become embarrassed and would have to concede that he was not able to incite me. This, of course, happened on many occasions. Hazrat Sheikh Yaqub Ali Saibarfani who relates an incident when a Brahmu leader, probably Ambash Muzamba Babu, came to the Promised Messiah when a foul-mouthed opponent came and started verbally abusing the Promised Messiah Hazur sat there quietly with his hand on his mouth while the man kept shouting abuse. And even the Brahmu leader tried to stop this attack. But the Promised Messiah said, leave him. Let him say what he wants. This went on for some time. Eventually the man got tired of his actions and left. The Brahmu leader was immensely impressed and said that this was a great moral miracle of yours. You could easily have silenced him. You could even have him removed from there or had his, removed his tongue. But you displayed extreme patience and kindness to him. And on another occasion in Lahore, a disciple of Peer Golra Sharif came to see Hazur al-Islam and sat opposite and asked for permission to speak. On being granted permission, he started swearing, started abusing, started cursing Hazur al-Islam in the worst language imaginable. And when he paused to catch his breath, Hazur would say to him, Sai Sab Kuchor, Sai Sab anything more? And the man would then continue in this abuse. The Promised Messiah sat with his hand on his chin and kept looking at him. At long last, the man got tired of this tirade and fell silent. Hazur looked at him and addressed him and said, Bhai sahab, kuch aur bhi kehle. Brother, say something else also. At this, the man burst into tears, fell, fell in front of the Promised Messiah and sought his forgiveness and said, I made a grave error. I did not realize the status of Azur, and he repented. It was the Promised Messiah's self-control in the face of this kind of adversity which demonstrates that Allah indeed had blessed him with this sterling quality. Another incident was when Safiya, related by Safiya Begum Sahiba, the wife of Sheikh Ghulam Ahmed Sahib, relates that on one occasion, when the Promised Messiah had gone to Delhi, an opponent used to come daily stand outside the house and shout abuse, swearing non-stop incessantly. Hazur al-Salam in response suggested to Hazrat Amma Jan Anhu, prepare a glass of some sweet drink and send it to him. His throat must get dry by the abuse that he keeps shouting. Hazur said, Galiyan sun ke dua deta hoon in logon ko Rahm hai josh mein aur ghaiz ghataya humne. On hearing abuse, I pray for these people. Mercy is in abundance and we have suppressed our anger. In 1903, when the Promised Messiah Islam started, started the construction of Minaratul Masih, his opponents, Hindus, Sikhs and Muslims colluded, got together and raised an objection to the authorities. When a government official arrived in Qadian to take evidence, one of the most vociferous opponents was Lala Buddha Mal. Hazur al-Islam said the objection, he said, had only been raised by these people who have enmity towards me. And pointing to Lala Buddha Mal, Hazur said, ask him that ever since our younger days till now, if there was ever an opportunity to do me an injury, and he neglected it. And ask him also, if there was ever an opportunity to do good, and I neglected it. Hazrat Hafiz Roshan Ali Sahib Raziyallahu relates that Lala Buddha Mal was so ashamed that he could not make a reply, let alone raise his eyes to look at the Promised Messiah 
and he hung his head in shame. It is plainly obvious to see that those people who were a constant thorn in the side in Qadian around him took every opportunity in placing obstacles and difficulties in his path. Hazur had constantly to face these problems and on his part he never failed to show kindness and compassion to them all. These very same people in times of need had the guile to turn to him and to seek his help. The case of Nihal Singh and Mirza Imam Din has already been mentioned. On another occasion, a Hindu opponent, Lala Sharampat Lal, fell ill. Fearing the worst, he became disillusioned. And when the Promised Messiah salam, came to know of this, he himself went to the house of this opponent of Islam to inquire of his health. Lala Sharampat Lal pleaded with the Promised Messiah salam, Hazrat Ji, mere liye dua kare. Hazur, pray for me. The Promised Messiah salam, not only prayed for him, but arranged for his treatment by Dr. Muhammad Abdullah Sahib. And Hazur salam, continued to visit him till a time came that he regained full health. To some, such incidents may seem minor, but from these one can realize the high moral status and kindness of Hazur salam towards his opponents. These incidents, and there are many, are important lessons for us all, just as are his directives preserved for future generations where he addresses each one of us and warns us of our responsibilities. Mr. Chairman, I started my speech with verses from the Holy Quran. I share with you a hadith of the Holy Prophet wasallam, in which he said, you do not do evil to those who do evil to you, but you deal with them with forgiveness and kindness. That is what Hazur did. I therefore finish my deliberations this morning with the words of the Promised Messiah ضرور ہے کہ تم دکھ دیے جاؤ اور اپنی کئی امیدوں سے بے نصیب کیے جاؤ سو ان صورتوں سے تم دلگیر مت ہو کیونکہ تمہارا خدا تمہیں آزماتا ہے کہ تم اس کی راہ میں ثابت قدم ہو یا نہیں اگر تم چاہتے ہو کہ آسمان پر فرشتے بھی تمہاری تعریف کریں تو تم مارے کھاؤ اور خوش رہو اور گالیاں سنو اور شکر کرو اور نہ کامیاں دیکھو اور پیوند مت توڑو کشتی نو اٹ از انیویٹیبل دیٹ یو ول بی پرسیکیوٹیڈ اینڈ ول سفر مینی ڈس اپوائنٹمنٹس بٹ ڈو ناٹ لوز ہارٹ ان سچ سچویشنز فار اٹ از یور گاڈ ہو ٹرائز یو ویدر یو آر اسٹیڈ فاسٹ ان ہیز کوز اور ناٹ اف یو ڈیزائر دیٹ اینجلس شوڈ پریز یو ان ہیون دین ان ڈیو بیٹنگ اینڈ بی جوائے فل ہیئر ابیوز اینڈ بی گریٹ فل experience failure and do not sever your relationship with God. Yakinan yaad rakho ke momin muttaki ke dil mein shar nahi hota. Momin jis kadar muttaki hota jata hai, usi kadar wo kisi ki nisbat seza aur iza ko pasand nahi karta. Musulman kabhi kina var nahi ho sakta. Haan, dousri kome aisi kina parvar hoti hai ke unke dil se dousre ki baat کین کی کبھی نہیں جاتی اور بدلہ لینے کے لیے ہمیشہ کوشش میں لگے رہتے ہیں مگر ہم دیکھتے ہیں کہ ہمارے مخالفوں نے ہمارے ساتھ کیا کیا ہے کوئی دکھ اور تکلیف جو وہ پہنچا سکتے تھے انہوں نے پہنچایا ہے لیکن پھر بھی ان کی ہزاروں خطائیں بخشنے کو ہم اب بھی تیار ہیں پس تم جو میرے ساتھ تعلق رکھتے ہو یاد رکھو کہ تم ہر شخص سے خواہ وہ کسی بھی مذہب کا ہو ہمدردی کرو اور بلا تمیز مذہب و قوم ہر ایک سے نیکی کرو ریمبر دیٹ اے رائٹس بلیور انٹرٹینز نو ای ول ان ہز ہارٹ دا مور ہی ایڈوانس از ان رائٹسنیس دا مور ہی ڈس لائکس پنشنگ اینڈ چیسٹائزنگ ادرز اے مسلم کین نیور انٹرٹین انٹرٹین رینکر وائل ادر پیپل آر سو فل آف رینکر that they never put it out of their hearts and they ever strive to avenge themselves. We know how our opponents have treated us. 
They have subjected us to every pain and difficulty within their power, yet we are ready to forgive them their thousands of mischievous deeds. You who have established a relationship with me must remember that you must have sympathy for every person of whatever religion he might be and that you should do good without distinction of caste and creed. It is no wonder today that we are blessed. We are blessed with an Imam, a Khalifa, who in his own life reflects these very qualities of patience, forbearance and kindness to all others. We indeed have witnessed these ourselves. A Khalifa who repeatedly admonishes us to bring about that pure change in our lives and do justice to the oath of allegiance that we have taken and one that we will inshallah renew later today. May Allah enable me and all of us to derive inspiration from these incidents of the kindness of the promised Messiah and to bring about that, that pure change. وآخر دعوانا عن الحمد لله رب العالمين